Well, this area where we're standing today was once known as Louisiana, named after King Louis XIV. And St. Louis gets its name from King Louis VIII. Okay? And the territory of Louisiana went from as far north as the border of Canada, east as the Mississippi River, as far south as the Port of New Orleans, as far west as the Colorado Rockies. Uh, that was known as Louisiana. So the first slaves in this area probably more than likely spoke French because it was the language of their masters. And more than likely they came from Haiti. Okay? And the French also occupied a small island in the West Indies as I referred to, as I said, Haiti. And there in Haiti they had taken slaves from the west coast of Africa and they were brought to Haiti to cultivate sugar because they were producing rum. And rum was a staple crop or a cash crop of the French. The French also occupied this territory that we're in today, was known as Upper Louisiana. And uh, they have taken slaves uh, from Haiti and brought them here to work in the mineral mines. So they were extracting minerals out of the mines uh, here in Missouri, out of the caves. Uh, the slaves in Haiti grew restless and they rebelled. And uh, it was a, over a 10 year period that ended around uh, 1803. That rebellion was led by a Toussaint Le Overture, Henry Christophe, and John de Salines, and they defeated the French. A little short, uh, Napoleon. I mean, people say, well, he has a Napoleonic complex. They get that from Napoleon Bonaparte, who was the French general at that time, but he was actually defeated by the African slaves in Haiti. Uh, the French, at the same time, were about to go to war with Great Britain, and they could not afford to maintain the territory of Louisiana because they were about to go to war and they needed a way to finance that war. So they sold the territory of Louisiana to uh, the United States at that time, or America. Thomas Jefferson was the president. He made the Louisiana Purchase for $15 million. And he appointed Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. And they set forth on the Lewis and Clark uh, expedition. York, as you see right here, he was a scout, a hunter, and a field doctor on the expedition. He was one of the only people on the expedition that could actually swim. We used the highways today. Back then, they used rivers by way of a keel boat. And it was York's job being a scout. Whenever they would approach a bank of land, he'd be the first to jump off the boat, and he would swim to the bank to greet the Indians. And he had to determine whether or not they were friendly or hostile. That was his job as a scout. Over here, if you look, at the river and it was right here this is where Lewis and Clark actually stayed for like three days right here at this point okay. and this was known as Cobb Point and you see the point you see the Missouri River to your right uh, right after the Civil War you got the rights to the Hannibal Bridge and that was the first bridge to cross the Missouri River that beef grew to be the second largest livestock exchange in the nation second only to Chicago and what you're looking at right over these bluffs is Kansas City's first downtown. The first Union Station was actually located in the West Bottoms. And the Underground Railroad actually went through the West Bottoms as well. So Missouri came into the Union as a slave state in 1820. Maine came in as a free state. Then Missouri came into the Union uh, with the Missouri Compromise. In 1831, Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act, which moved the Indians west. And uh, before that, Andrew Jackson had fought in the uh, Battle of New Orleans, it was part of the uh, War of 1812. And he had 400 black troops that he recruited from a plantation in New Orleans, Louisiana area. And what he did was, in order to get those, those blacks, those slaves, to join in the war effort to withstand the British as they were coming into uh, New Orleans, he promised them their freedom if they joined the war effort. Then, after the war was over, and the British retreated, uh, they were denied their freedom. He said he did not have the right to grant them their freedom because he did not own them in the first place. But that propelled him to become the seventh president of the United States. Our county's named after him, but right over there.